Let's start with China. The president is in Asia. He's heading for Beijing. He has made nice with Xi Jinping. But the U.S.-China trade talks collapsed in acrimony earlier this year. So what is the state of the economic relationship? I, I was, hi, Michael. Good morning. I wouldn't say acrimony. So, the, you know, this is a hard relationship, uh, and it's changed over the years. So we, w what the U.S. is seeking now is fair and reciprocal trade. So that's the idea that if our markets are open for you, then you should have markets that are more open for us. And that, that's been a stumbling block. That's a... That, uh, I, I really think acrimony is too uh, too strong a word. So what the president's doing is making sure that or that we're secure and improving our security in in Asia, creating relationships with the Indo-Pacific countries that spans Asia, and then with China, really pushing on the idea of fair and reciprocal trade. Well, you said this morning here today that uh, China's economic liberalization used to be powerful, but we worry that it has stalled or reversed. What has stalled? What has reversed? What are you going to do about it? So quite a bit has stalled. China used to be in a price liberalization mode. So they would take sectors of their economy and decontrol the prices. That was very constructive for their growth. They, they used to uh, work on state-owned enterprises and try to reduce the credit subsidies that were being provided. But they're, they're, they're not doing that as much now. R now what they're doing is uh, uh, export credit agencies that are very large. That means they subsidize exports uh, both at home and there at home in China and then abroad. And that creates unfair competition. Uh, and so th these are all issues where their direction changed. Uh, it had been market oriented or a liberalization trend in capital accounts, in state owned enterprises, in price prices and so on. In excess capacity, they were they were at a time making progress. and. And it's hard to see where that's going now. So that's what we want to push him on. Well, so with all of that, does the president raise the possibility of sanctions, trade sanctions? Do you threaten to take them to the WTO? What do you do? This isn't so much a matter of sanctions and threats. It's a matter of uh, the, the, the message being with China that what, what they've been thinking is happening isn't working for us. So really getting to a new paradigm where, where China really recognizes that there's got to be some reciprocity. I think that's where the message is. Uh, Broadcom moving its corporate headquarters to the United States, so basically it can get around Treasury's Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. Uh, is that a, 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 an issue for you? They want to buy Qualcomm, they want to buy Brocade, and they don't want to be questioned about their ties to, ties to China. I don't want to go to their to the the issue the way you phrased it. I think it's we welcome a company coming back to the U.S. Remember, it had it had done an inversion to move its business or its headquarters to, to, to outside the U.S. And the, as the tax bill is changing, w w what we see is that the U.S. is going to be a very attractive place to do business. I'd put it in that context. Well, 53 percent of their revenues come from China. So is that a concern? Uh, it, it, they might have questions if they were domiciled outside the U.S. I don't want to go to the CFIUS questions. I want to go more to the business questions of what they're, they're about. Uh, the, the, the U.S. is a big growing part of the world economy. And importantly, we're improving our tax system, our regulatory system, and so on. And I think you'll see more companies coming back into the U.S.